Hi, so you're starting your first pump project and uh, you want to, uh, you have an idea for, for pumping some liquid, for a display, uh, could be a fountain, uh, or maybe you want to transfer uh, water from one pond to another, or maybe it's for the cottage, you need a water supply for your cottage. So you need some information, you want to be able to get to go to the store and confidently be able to buy the right pump for the job. So the first information you need is you need to know the flow rate that you want to move through your uh, particular system. So if it's a fountain, well, you could experiment and uh, pour some water into a bucket and measure the, f measure the volume and the time it took and come up with a number for your flow rate. Maybe it's half a gallon a minute or maybe even less, depending on the size of the display. If it's the cottage, well, you'd probably be interested to know how fast uh, can I fill up the bath. And uh, you'll uh, experiment a little bit or just by Crunching some numbers, you'll figure out, well, probably five gallons a minute might be pretty good, maybe seven. So you need to do a little, little bit of research and uh, a little bit of uh, calculations for flow rate to get a, a good number that'll be uh, appropriate for the system that you, uh, you want to, uh, to provide a pump for. Now I find that uh, people get a little bit hung up about the pump, how it works, and this sort of uh, inhibits their uh, ability to, uh, to just figure out what they need. So let's, uh, let's imagine for now that the pump is a black box that provides pressure. Because after all, there's many different ways that we could provide pressure to a system. So we have now, uh, you've established the flow rate, which is one of the primary uh, f uh, factors you need to buy a pump. The next, uh, the next uh, element you need is the head of the pump. Now, Head is actually only work or energy. And uh, it's not uh, difficult to figure out uh, how much work you're doing. For example, we do it every day. If I go to the gym and I pick up a barbell with 100 pound weights and I lift up to five feet in the air, I'll have expended 100 times five foot pounds of energy. If I'm lifting, uh, let's say, a pound of water at five feet, I will have expended uh, five times one, five foot pounds of energy to lift that water up. So we know now this gives us an idea of how much energy we need to move the liquid, but you can't go to the store and tell a guy, well, listen, I need a um, pump for uh, five uh, foot pounds of energy and half a gallon a minute. That's not going to work. So we come up with a, another term called head. And all head is is the amount of work that you need to do divided by the weight of the liquid displaced. So we have work overhead that's equal to a height. So that term is now called head and uh, that will provide enough information to get the right size of pump. We have head and flow rate. So if I go to the store now and say I need a pump with five feet of head at this flow rate, I could, uh, depending on what size of pump I, I, I select, I, can, I will expect this pump to be able to lift the liquid up to five feet. Now we have a head and a flow rate. But the head that we have is actually just the amount of work that needs to be done to raise the fluid from one elevation to the other. The fluid hasn't started moving yet. So it's a minimum just to get that height, plus we're gonna have some friction head. Now, you might wonder why fluid like water uh, traveling through a pipe has friction. Yeah, it does. It, it's really a function of how fast it's going through the pipe and how long is the pipe and all that. I mean, there's friction everywhere. When you start moving, there's friction. Uh, if you're riding a bicycle, the tires uh, uh, against the road uh, have friction. The air resistance produces friction on your body. So anything that moves has friction, include, including fluids that are moving through pipes. So how do you determine uh, this friction? Well, uh, the first thing we need to do is uh, figure out the velocity so we know the flow rate and we know the uh, pipe uh, diameter, inter internal diameter, at least we've selected one, so we can calculate velocity quite easily. There's a formula for that that's very easy to use. Then once we have the velocity, now depending on whether the flow is turbulent, depending on the viscosity, well for water we know what the viscosity is, depending on the pipe roughness, there's a couple of formulas to use that will determine exactly how much friction uh, the movement of this fluid produces. So you can find these formulas on my website. There's also tables that will give you the amount of friction based on your pipe size and flow rate. And you can just look it up and uh, get a number per unit length of pipe. And if you know the length of the pipe, 
you will have your fiction. So I've included uh, at the bottom of this video, you'll see a link for, first of all, the presentation, uh, this presentation in a PDF format, and there's also an Excel spreadsheet where you can input some values and get some results for friction. So we, what we need to do now, once we've calculated the friction, we need to add that to the static head. So our head that we had before is now uh, increased with, by the friction. So we change the name of that term head now to total head, because now it includes friction and the uh, difference in elevation or static head that's required. So armed now with this information, total head and flow rate, you're in business to go to the pump store and try to get the best possible pump size capacity for your application. At the beginning, we said that we would uh, treat the pump like a black box. Well, let's, uh, let's take a look inside the black box a little bit. Um, when you go to the store, you're going to see a whole bunch of pumps that are available, but they'll typically all be centrifugal type pumps. So a centrifugal pump is one where there is a rotating element with curved blades, or if it's a very expensive pump, they may be straight. And water enters into the middle, is increased, uh, the pump rotation, impeller rotation increases the, sp the speed, that speed, velocities change the pressure and you have flow and pressure. So the thing about the centrifugal pumps is they all have a very similar characteristic curve of head and flow. So you can see at this point here, at the uh, low flow end, or zero flow, we have the maximum head, and that's, that's also called the shutoff head. And at the other end, we have the maximum flow and the lowest head. So when you go in the, to the pump, uh, the pump store, you're looking at the, uh, at the box information or, or whatever is available, and they tell you, well, this pump will lift a maximum uh, a four foot. They mean the head will have a maximum four foot. Well, what they're saying really is that the, uh, the head at the, at the lowest flow, at zero flow, is going to be four foot. So that's, if you need four foot, you're not getting any flow, that's not very good for you. So you need to select a pump that will have some flow at the head that you require. So your point, your operating point, will be somewhere between the uh, zero, head, uh, zero flow head and the maximum flow head. And that's where you want to try and select the pump. So if your requirement was something like uh, four foot at uh, half a gallon a minute, that's what you're looking for, or as close as you can get to that, because that's where the pump will operate uh, at its best. So if the pump has a, gives you the head you need, but a higher flow rate, that's, that's okay, because you can always put a little clamp on the discharge pipe or a small valve and reduce the flow, and uh, that'll still work for you. You're just uh, buying a, getting a slightly bigger pump than you really need. So what did some of these uh, pumps look like? I have here a small centrifugal pump, probably to be used in a fountain type of project. What we see here is the impeller. So water comes down in the center, the impeller is turning, so it's, it's uh, moving the water at high speed, it gets to the discharge side, the, high sp the speed is converted to pressure, and then you have flow and pressure uh, for your system. So it says here, this is the information they give us, that this pump will provide 140 gallons per hour at one foot of head. Not very much, but you know, if I need lower flow, I know because of this curve that I can get higher head at lower flow, and that may be just fine for what I need. So, there we are. Happy uh, pump buying and uh, good luck.